Hi there, I'm Mark Drummond and my friend here is Strawberry. I serve as the Chancellor of the Los Angeles Community Colleges. The Los Angeles Community Colleges is the largest system of its kind in the world, with nine colleges and over 130,000 students. Now Los Angeles may seem a strange place to talk about training mules and donkeys, but one of our colleges, Pierce College, is historically an agricultural school, and it still sits on 400 acres of land that hasn't been built over yet. About three years ago, Professor Ron Weschler, the equine science teacher, Dr. Robert Miller, Steve Edwards and myself started talking about building a program to train people about mules and donkeys. Since that time, a degree program and a certificate in mule training has been approved. The program will cover everything from mule breeding and nutrition through colt starting, through beginning and advanced training, including packing and driving. That program is getting ready to get up and running and we've raised seven million dollars to build a state-of-the-art mule and horse training facility. Between things like that and the equine program at Pierce College, we can bring the stature of the mule and the donkey up equal to the horse in the academic world and the understanding of our citizens. Hi, I'm Steve Edwards, Professor of Equine Science here in LA, California at Pierce College in Woodland Hills. What I'd like to do today is demonstrate to you how to get the mule to communicate with you properly. A mule naturally has communication areas and we need to use those communication areas to be able to say to them what we want. They don't understand come here. They don't understand go away. What they do understand is pressure points. They understand comfortable, they understand uncomfortable. When we do something as simple as bump on the lead rope, that makes them uncomfortable. Therefore, they're going to follow that lead rope in order to keep from being uncomfortable. So what we simply will do is I will show you key areas on your mule's head, on your, mule, on your donkey's head, as to why you place the halter, why you place the come along hitch, or why you step to their nose in order to be able to communicate to you, communicate to your mule or your donkey how to understand what you're asking. Now it's very important to understand that mules want to be comfortable. Donkeys want to be comfortable. It's, they don't have any problem at all with just standing in one place enjoying life. So we will have to be able to make them uncomfortable and then once they do as we want, we then make them comfortable. For instance, if I step to their hind quarters and slack my leg, that will make them uncomfortable. So they will naturally want to be comfortable and move off. When they do move off, then I will then get quiet and that will make them comfortable. If I keep slapping my leg, that will make them uncomfortable and they will want to keep on getting away from the pressure. But as soon as I get quiet and put my hands down, they will then say, oh, that's the area that I'm looking for, a comfortable area. Something as simple as putting your hand up, slapping your leg, or a deep, high, growling voice will make them uncomfortable. So understand, you're going to be having today demonstrations of several ways to communicate to your mule. You're going to be able to learn how to communicate with groundwork. You can use squared shoulders and be aggressive. That will make them uncomfortable. You can be angled shoulders and be passive. That will make them comfortable. You can get very passive in your arms and your legs, and that will make them comfortable. So you will learn communication skills through your body. You'll also learn how to use communication skills using what I call a come-along hitch. You'll also learn how to use the communication skills of halter work using the very basics of the rope halter. Again, this is foundation work. Keep all of your segments short. It's not a matter of putting a time frame where it's going to be 10 minutes, it's going to be 15 minutes, it's going to be 10 seconds, it's going to be 15 seconds. It must be so that when you see the mule has an understanding, you then stop that segment of training. How does he understand whether it's correct or not? 
when you feel the esophagus being nice and soft and loose, hanging like a bowl of jello. You see his eyes being nice, big, and brown. You see his head dropped, being in a relaxed situation. And you see his tail hanging nice and loose. You may even see a hind leg cock and get relaxed. Those things are telling you that the mule has an understanding of what you want. In these segments, we will teach you how to communicate. We'll also teach you how to, how to have the communication skills of being comfortable and being uncomfortable. One of the first things we're going to look at is groundwork. We're going to talk about how to have the five steps of communication for your mule and donkey. We're the second part we're going to work, look at is the come along hitch and its use. Then the final, the third part is the halter and its use as well. So in the very beginning, we're going to start with uh, the communication on the ground. Uh, we're going to talk about five communication skills. Using this uh, photo replica of a donkey, of a mammoth donkey, we're going to learn how to first step to the nose, which asks the, the uh, mule or donkey to quo or stop. We then, once we, we do that, we then step to the, to the neutral zone, which is the shoulder area, and that asks the, the mule and donkey to stand still and quiet. So we want to establish the whoa first, and we want to establish the second, the communication to the shoulder as neutral ground. Now, going to the nose, there are three things that you would look at. Going to the nose, it tells you to stop, to come to you, and to go away from you. Therefore, using those three communication skills, are very important for the mule or donkey to understand what you would like them to do. Now you may notice that the mule's nose may look to the right. And if you keep going toward the mule, he's going to say, oh, you want me to go to the right, and then we'll start off and go. If you stop and step to the right, then the mule will learn to, to stop, look at you, and turn and come to you. So that is the communication skills on the nose. The shoulder is neutral position. Anytime you go, to, uh, go forward towards your mule, you always want to approach them toward the shoulder, scratching and rubbing on the shoulder as well as the neck. Now, th your, your fifth and final part to this is the hindquarters. When you go to the hindquarters, you're asking your mule to step off. And depending on how aggressive you are to the hindquarters will depend on how quickly your mule or donkey will take off. Now these skills we're going to be talking about can also be used on a horse as well, uh, but for the most part we're going to focus strictly on the mule and the donkey. Now once we have established uh, our communication on the nose, on the shoulder, and on the hip, we can either use a square pin or we can use a round pin. I prefer a round pin about 60 foot in circumference, in that round pin, uh, you will be able to see how we get the mule to stop, to go, to come to us, and to go away from us. First step to the nose, which asks the, the uh, mule or donkey to quo or stop. We then, once we, we do that, we then step to the, to the neutral zone, which is the shoulder area, and that asks the, the mule and donkey to stand still and quiet. Going to the nose, it tells you to stop, to come to you, and to go away from you. Now you may notice that the mule's nose may look to the right. And if you keep going toward the mule, he's going to say, oh, you want me to go to the right, and then we'll start off and go. If you stop and step to the right, then the mule will learn to, to stop, look at you, and turn and come to you. When you go to the hindquarters, you're asking your mule to step off. And depending on how aggressive you are to the hindquarters will depend on how quickly your mule or donkey will take off. So we will have to be able to make them uncomfortable, and then once they do as we want, we then make them comfortable. For instance, if I step to their hind quarters and slack my leg, that will make them uncomfortable. So they will naturally want to be comfortable and move off. When they do move off, 
then I will then get quiet and that will make them comfortable. If I keep slapping my leg, that will make them uncomfortable and they will want to keep on getting away from the pressure. But as soon as I get quiet and put my hands down, they will then say, oh, that's the area that I'm looking for, a comfortable area. Something as simple as putting your hand up, slapping your leg, or a deep growling voice will make them uncomfortable. You can use squared shoulders and be aggressive. That will make them uncomfortable. You can be angled shoulders and be passive. That will make them comfortable. You can get very passive in your arms and your legs, and that will make them comfortable. What we're going to now do is use our mule, Fannie Mae. She's a three-year-old mule that uh, is uh, basically green. We've done a lot of foundation work with her, ridden her, and this sort of thing. And we're going to be using her in our training program. Now, you will see her make some mistakes. You will see how that I can take and use our training program to correct the mistakes. We want to make sure everything is done correctly. So we'll go from the corral to the round pin. In this part of the program, we're going to use Fannie Mae, a three-year-old Molly mule, and we're going to show the very basic foundation of asking the mule to stop when we step to the nose, to come to us when we step away, to go away from us when we step toward them, to stop when we, when we go to the neutral position on their shoulders, stand still and quiet, and to go to the hip to ask them to move off. So what we want to do is to be able to communicate those five communication skills before we go to our come along hitch. Now Fannie Mae's a three year old mule. She's basically green. She's gone through about uh, five months worth of training and uh, uh, she has some very good basics but she's still a baby and still will make mistakes. Now remember, even your older mules will make mistakes. So the first thing I'm going to do when I put her in a round pen is I'm just going to allow her to walk around, do whatever she wants to do. Kind of get quiet, kind of look at different things, and get a lot of her own questions answered in her mind. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to walk over to her, give her a little pet and a scratch. She wants to move off, I'll move her off. Now I'll move her, go to her nose, and ask her to go to the right. And I'll go to her nose and say, whoa, whoa. Now I'll step to her shoulder, which means to stand still and quiet. And I'll walk over and I'll pet her on the shoulder. Now I'll step away and ask her to come to me. Now I'll ask her to stop. And I'll give her another pet. Now notice what I want to do is create an area of being comfortable and uncomfortable. When she is not doing the correct thing, I will do something to help her to be uncomfortable. When she's being correct, then I will be quiet. I will pet her and scratch on her and this sort of thing. So now I'm going to make her uncomfortable. I'm going to tap on my right leg, ask her to move off. Now I'm going to step to her nose, ask her to whoa, and I'm going to walk over to her shoulder and pet and scratch on her. Now I'll go back to her nose, ask her to go away from me. Ask her to go away. Now I'll step to her nose, ask her to whoa. Step to her shoulder, ask her to stand quiet. And then pet and scratch on her. 
So what we want to do is get her to understand that stepping to her nose, ask her to stop. Backing away, ask her to come to us. Stepping toward her, ask her to go away from us. So I'm going to step toward her, ask, ask her to go away. So she goes away. I made her uncomfortable. And now I'll make her comfortable by being quiet. Now I'll push her away, make her uncomfortable. And then when she does as I want her to be, I'll be comfortable and I get quiet. Now I push her away, making her uncomfortable. And I'll back away, making her comfortable. I'll push her away, making her uncomfortable. Back away, making her comfortable. Now when she's doing correctly, Backing away makes her comfortable. So I'm going to ask her to whoa. And come up and pet and scratch on her a little bit. Now we'll ask her to go around from my right to the left. So I'll ask her to move off. And as long as she is doing correctly and that she's moving off, I don't do anything. And therefore, I make her comfortable. I don't want to move around, don't want to throw my hands in the air, don't want to slap my leg. As long as she's doing correctly in that she's moving from my right to my left, I won't do anything. As soon as she gets incorrect, I will slap my leg and push her off. And you can also take your rope and toss at her, whatever. But as long as she's going correct, I'm going to make her comfortable but by not making any sudden movements by not slapping my leg, by not throwing a rope at her. Now I'm going to ask her to, to stop, whoa, to her nose. Whoop, I'm going to step to her shoulder, pet and scratch on her and tell her, good, that's what I want. Now I'm going to move her off to my right. I'm going to move her off. And as long as she's being correct, I'm going to be quiet. I'm not going to move my hands. I'm not going to throw something at her. But when she's being incorrect, by stopping or, or getting something to eat, I'm going to make her uncomfortable by slapping my leg or tossing a rope at her. Now, she did correct, so I stepped to her nose. Whoa. I stepped to her shoulder, which means to stand still and quiet. And I come over and pet on her and tell her that's what I want. That's what you want to do. Step to her nose, whoa. That way she knows she's being correct. Then step to her shoulder. That means stand still and quiet. If you keep going toward her nose, you will push her off and she will think she's supposed to leave. If you step back, she will think that you want her to step toward you. So that's what you would be doing when it comes down to communication. You step toward the hip. You ask her to move off. You step toward the head, whoa. And then you step to ask him to stop, and then step to the shoulder to ask him to stand still and quiet. Your neutral area, the, the place that you are the quietest, the place that you are the, 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 the safest is right here in the shoulder area. Now you'll notice when I use the term of go to, I simply mean I will step in the direction of the nose, or I will step in the direction of the shoulder. I do not mean that I will be going directly to the nose or going directly to the shoulder. I simply mean that from an, an area that my mule will learn the communication, when I see them going from my right to the left, I will step toward their nose to my left and that will ask them to stop. Then I will step to the right in the direction of their shoulder and ask them to stand still and quiet. That does not mean physically you will go directly to their nose, but that means to communicate with your mule from a distance to ask them to stop and then to stand still. That will help you to, to communicate to your mule from a distance the direction you want them to go and the type of communication that says, I want you to stop or I want you to stand still and quiet. During this production, you'll notice that I'll use the term of asking. I don't say, Mr. Mule, step over there, because obviously he does not understand. But when I say I'm going to ask the mule to move off, that means I'm going to step toward his hindquarters, 
which then put pressure on him, which will make him uncomfortable, then he will move off. In a sense, in his language, what he understands, when I step toward the quarters, that is saying there is now pressure on you, and then when I slap my leg, that is more pressure, and that would be the same as you and I saying, go over to, to the left, it would be saying to him, step over to the left. So you will hear me say during these segments, I'm asking him to move over, and basically the way I'm doing it is by my body posture and my body movements. In our next part of our production, our program, we will show you how to use the come along hitch. Now I'm going to ask her to, to stop, whoa, to her nose. Whoop, and we'll step to her shoulder, pet and scratch on her and tell her, good, that's what I want. Now I'll step away and ask her to come to me. Now I'll ask her to stop and I'll give her another pet. Now we'll ask her to go around from my right to the left. So I'll ask her to move off and as long as she is doing correctly and that she's moving off, I don't do anything and therefore I make her comfortable. Now she did correct, so I stepped to her nose, whoa. I stepped to her shoulder, which means to stand still and quiet, and I come over and pet on her and tell her that's what I want. You step toward the hip, you ask him to move off, you step toward the head, whoa, and then you step to ask him to stop, and then step to the shoulder to ask him to stand still and quiet. What you've seen in this program will help you to have better communication and set a firm foundation for your mule and donkey. Your halter is the very most important part of your tack room tools. As you saw in the round pen work, we were able to communicate to our mule to be able to stop and to go and to have a neutral area and to come to us and to go away from us. The, the catching in the corral as well, showing that uh, segment, produces a way to communicate to your mule properly as to where his place is to where your place is. We here at Pierce College want to help you be better at communicating to your mule and donkey. You can contact us with a number that's on your screen now, both on the website as well as the phone number. We'd be more than glad to help you with your equine education here at Pierce College. Hi there, I'm Mark Drummond and my friend here is Strawberry. I serve as the Chancellor of the Los Angeles Community Colleges. The Los Angeles Community Colleges is the largest system of its kind in the world, with nine colleges and over 130,000 students. Now Los Angeles may seem a strange place to talk about training mules and donkeys, but one of our colleges, Pierce College, is historically an agricultural school, and it still sits on 400 acres of land that hasn't been built over yet. About three years ago, Professor Ron Weschler, the equine science teacher, Dr. Robert Miller, Steve Edwards and myself started talking about building a program to train people about mules and donkeys. Since that time, a degree program and a certificate in mule training has been approved. The program will cover everything from mule breeding and nutrition through colt starting, through beginning and advanced training, including packing and driving. That program is getting ready to get up and running and we've raised seven million dollars to build a state-of-the-art mule and horse training facility. Between things like that and the equine program at Pierce College, 
we can bring the stature of the mule and the donkey up equal to the horse in the academic world and the understanding of our citizens. Once we have established in the round pen or in a square pen how to ask the mule to stop, come to me, go away from me, how to ask them to stand still and quiet at the shoulder, and how to ask them to move them off, our next step will be to take a rope, which is three-eighths around. We want it fairly rough, and we want it to be about 20 foot long. Using this rope will teach the mule how to communicate through the halter. Now I know a lot of you are used to using a nylon or leather halter or even a rope halter. The rope halter is the second stage to your halter training. Your very first stage will be the communication through the come along hitch. Now one of the first things you'll have to learn how to do is to tie a bowline around the neck. So we'll go underneath the neck over top of the neck. Now we're going to take these two fingers and turn the rope to create a hole. It will look like a figure six. We then will go, the snake comes out of the hole. He goes underneath the log and back into the hole again. And then we pinch his head and we pull his tail. That creates a bowline and will not get tight on the neck. Once you've established the bowline on the neck, you now create what we call a come-along hitch. Now the purpose of the come-along hitch <coughs> is to be able to communicate to the mule that you would like to have a particular uh, uh, communication skills accomplished. By using the pole, by using underneath the chin and over across the nose, those three points with the communication halter, communication come along, will create pressure points that will establish to the mule or donkey that you do have the control over them. Unlike a chain which can only go underneath the chin or over the nose, this will communicate in three major places. We do not want this come along hitch to be going no lower than two fingers above the nostril, no higher than two fingers above the cheekbone. Any lower than that, you, you will have a chance of breaking the cartilage on the lower part of the nose. Higher than this, you will not have enough communication value to get the mule or donkey to instantly understand what you want. Now I want to throw some communication in here to you. Now it's very important to understand the places that your rope is going to be attached. Back behind the ear is the pole area. It's extremely sensitive. It's kind of like the computer area in that this area, when I touch this, I can actually move the feet. And we go across the nose via the second part and underneath the chin, the third part. We do not go no lower than two fingers above the nostril, no higher than two fingers above the cheek. Now, as a word of caution here, do not ever tie your mule up with this come along hitch. You can create some tremendous, tremendous damage to your mule or donkey. So, by placing it lower down, you will have quicker communication skills the higher up, you will have less the communication skills. Underneath the chin is, a, is an area that is really soft and there is no gristle or any type of fat area and it's strictly hide over top of the skull. So therefore, again, it's a very tender area and you're going to be working on the nerves on the nose, underneath the chin, and back behind the pole. One of the biggest problems that we have is learning to communicate to the nose on a mule. So therefore the come along hitch works very well. Go underneath his neck, over top of the neck. 
Now we're going to take these two fingers and turn the rope to create a hole. It will look like a figure six. We then will go, the snake comes out of the hole. He goes underneath the log and back into the hole again. And then we pinch his head and we pull his tail. That creates a bowline. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to demonstrate how to place the come along hitch. We're going to go underneath the nose and around from the right side to the left. And then we'll go underneath the nose again from the right side to the left. And we take our second rope and go over top of our first rope. Now we take our first rope and start pulling it up. And we take our second rope and start feeding the loop. And as you see my right hand feeding the loop, the left hand is making the loop that's going to go over top of the ears. Now you put your left hand on the nose. You come across the right ear first, left ear second, and now you take up the slack. Pulling on the rope with your, left, with your right hand and holding on with the left hand so that it goes in the area that you want. When you first apply your come along hitch, you want to apply it down low, two fingers above the nostril. As your mule or donkey progresses, you then can come up higher. And you do want to do that because you don't want to create pressure on your mule and donkey as he does better. So by using the come along hitch, I now will be able to communicate to the pole across the nose underneath the chin that I would like to have something done. But we'll come underneath the chin from the right to the left. That's our first loop. Now we'll go underneath the chin again and go from the right to the left. But this time, we will cross and go over top of the very first loop. We now take and take the right hand and push on the rope to give it some length. And our left hand pulls up on the, on the very first loop. And as we pull up on the loop, we use the right hand to add to the length. And then we go over the right ear first, left ear second. Now we hold on to the first loop and we pull the second loop to pull the slack out. We want it to be nice and snug. By placing the come along hitch on your mule or donkey, you will communicate in three places. The pole area, across the nose, underneath the chin. And as you notice, when you pull on your rope, it pulls both on the pole area and the nose and underneath the chin. By communicating to those three areas, you will have a good device to be able to communicate to your mule to respond as quickly as you ask. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my 3 8 rope, about 20 foot long, and I'm going to create on my mule what's called the come along hitch. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk up to my mule, pet and scratch on his old shoulder some, pet and scratch on his neck. And I'm going to place my hand on his neck by, and pull him to my left, which asks the mule to turn toward me. I'm now going to take and put on my come along hitch. First, I'm going to put on my bowline. And now, since my mule's head is in the proper position, I do not have to ask for his head to be down. And when I say by ask, I would simply, if his head's up too high like this, I would put my left hand on his nose, my right hand on his neck, and by putting pressure on, 
That is asking him to drop his head. He is then trying to be comfortable by taking the pressure of my hand off his nose and off his neck. So you want to place your hand, your right hand on the neck, left hand on the nose, and by putting a small amount of pressure, ask the mule to put his head down. And when I say ask, it's simply because when I'm pushing on, he understands to get away from the pressure, and that is the same as saying, put your head down. So now I'll take and put my hand on his nose and put the come along hitch on. And as you will remember, uh, the come along hitch is what I demonstrated to you in the classroom. Now that the come along hitch is on there, I'm going to pet and scratch on him. Now to use the come along hitch, I will move around to the right and to the left. What I don't want to do is I do not want to steady pull on the mule and have the rope become tight. I want just simply to pull, release, pull, release, pull, release. In other words, you are bumping the mule, bumping. Not a steady pull. If you do a steady pull, you will make the mule brace. And what we want to do is keep the mule soft. So it's going to be a bump, bump, rather than a steady pull. Now if you notice, my hand is barely moving. It's just rolling your wrist. When you place your rope in your hand, have the rope come up underneath the palm and up over top of your thumb. This way you can take your hand and simply roll your wrist. When I want him to stop, all I have to do is create some discomfort by wiggling the rope. When I want him to back up, all I have to do is create some discomfort by bumping the rope and then wiggling it and asking him to back up. When I want him to stop, I just bump it and I ask him to step to the, to the right, ask him to step to the, to the left. And remember, this is their right, their left. So from behind, looking on the right side, looking on the left side, their right hand side is over here, which is the off side, the off side of the mule. The, the near side is the closest part to you. So from behind, this will be the left side, and over here will be the right side. Now in doing your work, there's simple things you can do by taking a rope underneath the neck, going around behind the quarters and then bumping them and asking them to go around in a circle. By doing that, you're going to teach the mule to listen to the smallest amount of pressure that says, turn to the right, turn to the left. What we'll do is we go underneath the neck, up over top of the back, around behind the hind quarters and ask them to come around. You'll do this as many times as it takes to, to have them come around nice and soft. Again, Fanny has done this several times, so for her to come along nice and simple, it's pretty easy to do. You will have times to where your mule, let me ask her to stop and to stand still, where they may be stiff. You may have to give them a couple sharp bumps, which comes to the next part. You want to ask them, tell them, demand upon them. You ask them with just a small movement of your wrist. When they say no and they put their head down anyway, I give them a sharp bump, I tell them. And if I have to, I may have to give them an even sharper bump and demand upon them to stand still. So you're going to use the thought of asking, telling, demand upon him. Okay, in review, a come along hitch is a lot more sensitive to the mule and donkey than a chain is. A chain can only communicate underneath the chin or over the nose, where the come along hitch can communicate at the pole area across the nose and underneath the chin. Now the pole area is extremely sensitive. In behind the ears is extremely, extremely sensitive. So when this rope 
pulls on the pole area, it will communicate to the feet the, the direction you want it to go, whether it will be a stop, a go, a turn, a right or left. The pole area is mainly to encourage the feet to go forward because as you pull on this rope, you can see the, the rope will then pull down on the pole which will communicate to the feet to go forward. Across the nose is the stop, the whoa. Again, the hide is of the mule is right across the nose. There is no muscle or fat to speak of, but a lot of nerves. With this rope being across the top of the nose, it will instantly communicate to the nerves on the nose to do as you ask. Now, you can make it these three areas very insensitive by pulling on them rather than bumping them, okay? So always remember a steady bump will be better than a hard pull. Now, underneath the chin, the same place. You have a V-shaped area underneath the chin. And here is one part of the jawbone, here is another part of it. By, by using this jawbone at the hide, your rope going across it will communicate to turn to the right or the left. And by ru this rope rubbing across the jaw jawbone will communicate moving to the right or left. So using the come along hitch will help you communicate faster to three major areas on your mule or donkey's nose. Remember, the smallest change will get you a lot more than trying to make big changes at one time. Always do your program, your training programs, with short, small segments. It's very, very important. I would do no more than asking the donkey to come over to the left by a simple bump, 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 or going to the right by pushing them with the, with the rope, bump, 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 or to stop, pull straight down, bump, bump. Never a steady pull. Always rolling your wrist with slight, quiet movements. Now the third part of your communication in halter work is extremely important, and that is the use of a rope halter. You've seen in the other segments to where we use groundwork and we use the come along hitch. Now as we get more and more refined with our work, we're going to want to go to a rope halter. A rope halter has become very popular these days, but very misunderstood. Each one of these knots have a particular purpose. Every knot here can be moved and readjusted and is not meant to be in one place. And as you can see here, we have a, a total of six knots. Each knot has a particular purpose. Now, as we look at these knots, we can understand how to adjust them and to move them. When you look at this knot, we can simply take the two ropes on the right and on the left, and we push the two of them together. And you can see how the knot gets bigger. As we push the two together, we can slide it to the left, or we can slide it to the right and be able to accomplish where we want it so that it's in a key place on the nose and on the head of your mule. Now let's say I want to take the knot on my right hand side and I want to move it to the left, making these two knots being right on top of the nostril. I simply take my knot, take my two ropes, push them together, slip it to the left, and now you can see I have both of my knots close together. I'll do that one more time. I take my two ropes, I push them together, I then slide my knot to the left, as you can see now, it gets even closer. The idea of these two knots is to be right on top of the nostril so that you can, in essence, shut the air off. And again, we're talking split seconds timing. As we progress, we're going to no longer go to the rope halter, but we'll go to a nylon or leather halter. So as we go along, we look at this Turk's head knot on the bottom. Again, I can move this knot any way I want 
by taking the two ropes, push them together, and then I can push them to the right or to the left to be able to get this length I need to have or this length. Now, these two ropes go and communicate to the lower part of the jaw to go to the left and to the right. When we look up the bottom side of the jaw, we see we have a V shape. The right side, the left side, which is the near side or the off side. These two ropes will communicate to the jawbone to move to the right or left. We want those to be approximately one half of an inch from the bottom of the jaw. By doing that, we will shorten our communication. If they are longer than that, then the rope will take quite a bit of time before it touches the jawbone, and therefore the mule will have longer to think about things. So we want him to very quickly understand, this is what I want you to do, move off to the rope, right or left, and by doing that, you'll have good, quick communication skills. Now the knot back here, this knot should be just right up underneath in front of the jaw. Just enough that you can put pressure there so that when you bump it and ask your mule to come, this knot on the rope will bump on the bottom of the jaw. And as it bump, 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 he's going to come forward to be able to get away from that pressure. The two knots on the right and the left are meant to, again, hit key nerve areas on the jaw on the right and on the left. They can be placed any way you want. The final is the rope that comes up over top of the pole and through the loop. The, the way you tie the final knot is you take your working end, come through the loop, around behind the loop, go from the left to the right, and then back through the very first loop. I then pull the two together, and as the more it gets pulled, the tighter it will get. It's very easy to take it loose as you push the two together, the bottom and the top, and then you take it out of the knot. One of the common things that people do with these rope halters is they tend to take the knot and put it at the top. When you put it above the loop, as the mule moves around tied and he moves back and forth, back and forth, pretty soon the rope will come untied. So it's important that you tie a square knot. The square knot simply means you take the working end, you come through the loop, come around behind, and back through the loop again. You then pull it tight by pulling the top and the bottom, and your knot will then get tight. The more they pull on it, the tighter it will get. Remember, this is only the second stage of your halter training. The ultimate goal is to go to a nylon or to a leather halter. But in the very beginning of your foundation training, you must teach the key, key near nerve areas on the pole, underneath the chin, and across the nose. By training the key nerve areas across the pole, across the nose, underneath the chin, you will communicate to your mule, to your donkey, to respond correctly. If you use a big wide halter, leather or nylon, in the very beginning, you tend to over-pull. You tend to pull more than you do sharp bumps, which will create a lighter mule by using the bump, bump action rather than a steady pull. So that should help you with your communication of rope halters.
is we want to take the nose piece, which is this part here, and we want to place it on our left arm like this and have it go to the elbow. I then want to walk up to the shoulder area, which is the neutral area, and scratch on his neck and make him feel good. And I want to impress upon you, it's important that they drop their head and tip their nose. You do that by asking them, putting your hand on the right hand side upon their neck, the left hand side on their nose. That asks them to be still and quiet while you're putting the halter on. I then place the part that's going to go up over top of his neck, underneath his neck, and up over top behind the ears. I then ask him to drop his head down. He will then place the halter over his nose, and then the rope will come over top behind the ears in the pole area. I then take my, my working end, come through the loop, and tie my knot. What you don't want to do is take the halter like this and fight with them and shove their nose up. As you can see, their head will go in the air and then flip it over and try to put it on that way. That's not the correct way to do it. You want the mule to learn to be supple. So we want to take the nose piece, which is this part here, and we want to place it on our left arm like this and have it go to the elbow. I then want to walk up to the shoulder area, which is the neutral area, and scratch on his neck and make him feel good. And I want to impress upon you, it's important that they drop their head and tip their nose. You do that by asking them, putting your hand on the right hand side upon their neck, the left hand side on their nose. That asks them to be still and quiet while you're putting the halter on. I then place the part that's going to go up over top of his neck, underneath his neck, and up over top behind the ears. I then ask him to drop his head down. He will then place the halter over his nose, and then the rope will come over top behind the ears in the pole area. I then take my, my working end, come through the loop, and tie my knot. Pierce College want to help you be better at communicating to your mule and donkey. You can contact us with a number that's on your screen now both on the website as well as the phone number. We'd be more than glad to help you with your equine education here at Pierce College.